ba, ba, ba. Farfetch acquires stadium goods for 250 million. Yeah, man. Big news, isn't it? Sneaker industry is a billion dollar industry. As I've said multiple times, I've written a few blog entries about this on why I hate a Max Day, why I said sneakers need to make their minds up, which I might link actually in the show notes you to check out, but I recommend you do. Um, but, you know, sneaker industry, we all know it's a big billion dollar industry because, you know, we have these um, services like Go, like stadium goods, um like um stock x which are even which kind of kind of an evolution of um what was that thing called uh flight club there's kind of a, a step up from flight club right these consignment stores that are now allowing people to buy limited edition shoes wherever you are in the world as long as you have the money to buy them limited edition shoes have kind of def- it's sort of like top tower a little bit i think especially um a good example is the cold wall um collection with nike right from from the last time i checked on dover street market most of the size of the shoes were still available now it, it needs to be said that the cold wall trainer is not um is not a, a particular model that hype beasts are generally fond of i think it's probably a little bit too avant-garde for your general hype beast consumer who kind of wants you know the quintess who's kind of more apt to buy an air force one a jordan that gets reworked it's a little bit more easier to buy but i thought that was fairly interesting to see that the shoe that you know in in yesteryears this shoe would have been sold out in fucking seconds but i remember it still being available maybe if i go back to here and i go back to maybe a cold war let me see but i remember seeing on the dover street market site it was still available and that was kind of an indication to me that maybe it's kind of all kind of topped out a little bit and you need to kind of chill out and take it easy for instance yeah this is the one right so the nike a cold war uh zoom vomen vomero right that's a that just came out the other day i think it's probably one of the best collections they've done so far in that whole collaboration i think the clothes are amazing i think what sammy ross did everything is fucking cool i thought the store installations were great it's one of the best ones and then to be honest as soon as i get paid this is the shoe that i'm buying right so i'm not gonna i'm not saying so it's a slight so for me i'm happy with it i don't i don't really mind that i saw that because again I'm, I'm not really i try and buy stuff that isn't the kind of quintessential hype beast taste but this kind of shows for me that maybe it's kind of leveling out a little bit and it's not maybe as being i think that they, it's, it's too much right for instance like the jerry lorenzo the all these shoes they're all coming out at sort of the same sort of time it's, there's not there's there's not enough time to breathe if people are complaining about albums right hear people on shows all the time on, on hip-hop shows on podcast shows that can, might kind of annoy some people where they're like oh have you heard this so-and-so album no i haven't heard it and it kind of can be annoying but if you think about it and if you think that you know you you know you live your everyday life you have your family whatever it may be Imagine there are an amount of releases that come out, right, that aren't to do with hip-hop and then include all the other music that you're going to listen to. It's very difficult to kind of get through all the songs, to get through all these projects, especially now when artists are trying to game the system by having albums that have more than 10 tracks on them, right? So you can get more spins, more plays on kind of Spotify or whatever it may be. So if people can't get through albums, imagine shoes that are coming out 10 a penny there's always something if you go on drop date and you scan through the list of shoes that are coming out within the next couple of weeks it's insane right it's insane especially if you're not brand loyal and you don't care about only repping one brand you could buy literally a shoe a day until the end of time but um this is probably a good example of the fact that maybe it's a bit you know it's getting a little bit too crazy but also also maybe underlines why um farfetch decided to acquire stadium goods for so much money so this is a new collaboration of course from um a cold wall the zoom vomero and it's available in most sizes a full kind of a full size run except for a few sizes in between from an eight to a ten half size in between it's available full size run in both colorways which is which is insane you would never get that in, in previous years right in both colorways it's fully available in most of the kind of popular sizes that will kind of get resold so that maybe is, a, is an indication that it might have topped, top leveled out a little bit for the most part. But I saw this and thought it was quite interesting that they acquired stadium goods because for the most part, StockX is the one that people kind of talk about quite highly. I know from perusing from um, US-based um, forums, a lot of people say stadium goods is quite overpriced and it isn't what it used to be, quote unquote. But a lot of people kind of prefer using StockX, which I used a couple of times, which I think is fucking an amazing service. StockX is one of the best, the best, the best, the best. You can just buy. You just buy it. You can just bid for an item. You can also be cheeky, but you can just buy it um uh, and an item it gets authenticated at the warehouse before it gets to you and yeah the shipping the turnarounds was fucking amazing if anything i can't wait for them to kind of elevate a little bit further instead of being the middle the middle person acting as a middle person same with grailed i'd love it if they kind of especially with the, i'd imagine they might do it with the top sellers where they would kind of uh, take their inventory into their kind of quote-unquote warehouse and then that out so then you can you can uh, then you could then compete then you could then compete with the likes of amazon and you could basically get stuff to people same day delivery 
um, next day delivery. Like that would be an amazing service. For now, of course, I know it's probably a bit easier for them to kind of move and be a bit more agile in terms of being the middleman. So all you need is basically a laptop and a space to kind of authenticate shoes. Uh, but it'll be cool to kind of see that progression kind of take uh, forth, especially if you imp- especially if you kind of implement some machine learning techniques that can kind of spot fakes and that sort of malarkey. I think that would be amazing. But I saw this article about Farfetch at State acquiring Stadium because I thought it was interesting because, you know, for the most part, Farfetch is pretty gobshit, the website. I think the website design or the UI, UX, whatever it may be, is horrible to use. Um, whenever their shopping links come up on on Google, I always click off of them. I'm not sure if anyone else does the same thing. So interesting to see how they're going to, if they're going to um, put some of their funk on Stadium Goods or if they're going to steer in a whole different direction. I don't know what they're going to do, but um, this article on business and fashion sort of details some of the things. Actually, I think there's another article here actually that kind of says a bit better. But let me see if it's available. Stadium Goods. Yeah. Let's put it up on here on the screen. So as it says here, uh, Farfetch has acquired Stadium Goods, a fashion platform is seeking to gain an edge in an increasing competitive online luxury space, picking up uh, the growing streetwear consignment marketplace. It's the first major move uh, since... Going public in September, Farfetch announced Wednesday that it is acquiring sneaker and streetwear marketplace Stadium Goods in a deal that values the business at 250 million, which is insane. Well done, man. Um, the London based fashion e commerce platform is aiming to extend its reach in the growing luxury sneakers and streetwear market as millennials account for a growing percentage of luxury sales and competitors are engaged in a digital land grab, which is very, very true. So I'd imagine Farfetch probably went to make a move into the sneaker um, business or industry. And instead of kind of like, you know, um, doing it there on their own they would much rather buy an already established platform such as stadium goods uh, acquire their talent bring them all in-house and then kind of run it through their system i assume that's what they want to do now of course most acquisitions are not going to go that easily or that well you only have to look at what happened with kevin systrom and co when uh, facebook acquired them and they are just left i don't know it's kind of like a it kind of like um signals that the the uh the beginning of the end for the original employees obviously because you kind of get drawn into another company and you have to kind of go underneath their rules their direction whatever it may be they might fuck up your product so of course the end is soon to come but it's interesting kind of acquisition going forward in terms of the industry and where it's kind of steering itself towards so it kind of sees like you know as much as these fashion commentators want to bemoan the um, resurgence of streetwear this kind of shows you that that streetwear is going nowhere i think the idea of the idea of luxury that once prevailed within some of the fashion columns or within some of these people that are uh, um what you call it angry that streetwear has kind of got a foothold i think it's there's no going back now the idea of modern luxury being you know crocodile skin trainers or crocodile skin shoes has gone has long gone now luxury can be a webbed belt luxury can be a pair of sunglasses you know uh, modern day luxury has been reinterpreted in the streetwear lens and i'm all for it anyway the the article continued farfetch's first partner with stadium goods they can sign a resale of rare limited edition shoes on a distribution deal in april 2018 bringing a small section of products sold on stadium goods to farfetch which is cool after the deal closes stadium goods full inventory will be available for farfetch users which is fucking insane stadium goods will continue to operate independently while tapping into farfetch logistics and delivery capabilities we know that's not true they're, they're going to be independent but only for us uh, only for as long as they can stomach it which i know for again for the guys that found it i think it's amazing what a good glow up for them so i hope they they cashed out but that is you know there is there's no guarantee that that's going to last that well i think the only company that's been able to do that no they actually didn't get acquired did they and i know sneaker stuff got some investment from another company and i remember they made a blog post detailing that no, don't worry guys we, we didn't get acquired i think they just got some investment so they kind of gave up a bit of equity in their in their company which is maybe a bit different and kind of getting totally absorbed by a big conglomerate such as farfetch um the world's largest e-commerce player, Farfetch. It's the world's largest, but it's not good, is it? It's not very good. I don't know who actually uses Farfetch and buys stuff from there. Um, I, I, people do, of course, because that's why they're the largest, I'm assuming. Um, but to the to discerning fashion um, um, enthusiasts, you're not going to use Farfetch to buy your goods, are you? Really? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Um, uh, uh, matches and Richmond's York Nickapot are locked in a race to uh, add um, new services and technologies through investments, acquisitions, and internal research and development in order to stay ahead of the pack, generate higher margins, and become the go to platform for consumers and brands, according to BOF and McKinsey State of Fashion Report, which is true because you know the the fashion, but the buyers of 
the buyers of luxury or the buyers of fashion or the buyers of street right now they're getting younger and younger and younger you know you only have to look at pages such as like the basement or the comments that get left in kind of you know instagram posts on shops that update you know showing you lookbooks of images and stuff of new items that are coming into the store and you can just gauge by the words that are used by the people that are leaving the comments if you click through their profiles that the discerning fashion customer is a young 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 like they're not as old as they used to be back in the day and you know for, for the most part the stuff you're seeing in the runways logo heavy bright 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 primary colors um really cool interesting materials um limited edition drops all this sort of stuff you know loads of brands are kind of doing that kind of streetwear model like burberry did with the t-shirts and the hoodies and stuff that ricardo tissue designed there's a real move to kind of get that customer everyone wants that customer to kind of get on board with what they're doing um so it's no surprise that some of these companies are saying okay let's look at our runway let's look at who what we got to coming up let's look at the things that we want to do in the next few years and if you've got a, if you've got a kid that's going to be brand loyal to gucci who's 15 now you've got a long long time to sell him shit right so it makes come it makes complete sense to kind of tap into a, uh, a marketplace like um stadium goods where this same kid that's buying gucci jeans or is buying the gucci ghost hoodie and shit is most definitely going to buy something of stadium goods so you're kind of tying it all into one platform which i kind of get um fully fully understand so yeah th this is a big big shift i hope again the the founders of um um the founders of stadium goods here i think they've mentioned it here actually what do they say here stadium goods co-founder and chief executive john McFeeter said farfetch international reach would be a major boost of business of course so they can tap into that distribution they figured um they figured out a lot of things that we are still learning uh said McFeet is and co-founder jed first met neves a year ago and began the conversation that led to a deal so it's a, it's a it's a year in the making so yeah that's quite cool to see again um shifting nature of sneaker industry multi-billion dollar in industry where a company like farfetch is acquiring stadium goods for 250 million right and yet these kind of these companies or these brands still want to give you the illusion that these shoes are limited edition that they can only produce a certain amount but yet they're churning them out um at a flipping breakneck speed something has to give something has to give which is why sometimes some of the limited edition shoes are getting devalued because you go on StockX, and especially for me i don't care because i'm not buying shit because there's a limit i'm buying stuff because i like it i'm a i'm a i'm a discerning uh sneaker head i'm not like someone who's going to buy stuff for the sake of it which is some people that do do that no problem not have an issue with that but even for those people that are buying stuff that is limited and they want to buy it because it's only certain made certain amount made of it when you go on StockX and you can pick it up for a hundred dollars uh, over retail it kind of you know the 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 mystique of it the allure of it is kind of you know it kind of washes away because there's no demand for it because it's been oversaturated you only have to look at some of the recent releases on StockX, and some of them don't go for it's, it's it, unless it's an off-white collabo they don't even go for double what they sold for retail and that's the standard markup that most people most resellers are kind of aiming for resellers argument i think is long and died i think that's died away now i think no, no one's really um consciously saying you know bemoaning that resellers are spoiling the sneak industry i think in the beginning they were if anything they were um giving uh brands and merchandisers the wrong impression as to what was actually popping on the streets and what was actually popular because things were just selling out and it was assuming that okay people must love this kind of model and they were, they were overbuying um that particular model for the next season and then they were getting you know left with uh dead stock of a particular model that was, wasn't necessarily um on brand not wasn't necessarily trendy but might have had a bit of a spike of interest during those years um i only had to look at flipping nike vandals when they first came out um the kind of retro of those they were everywhere um, then loads of stores kind of cottoned on really late. They kind of over-indexed and overstocked themselves of Nike vandals, and then they were left with they were left on the sales rack for I for flipping months upon months, which kind of again uh, devalued the model itself, devalued the brand. So the the reseller thing has kind of died down i think now what people are realizing is that it's the brands themselves that are fucking everyone over they're fucking over the stores by making them carry certain lines in order to kind of stock the limited edition thing uh they're fucking over the brand itself because you know they're devaluing it by making so much of the item and they're fucking over the uh the customer who wants to just to wear the shoe because they're purposely limiting the distribution purposely limiting the manufacturing um of the shoe in order to create this fake sense of scarcity that doesn't really exist there's too many people if farfetch is buying Stadium because of 250 million people, 250 million dollars. Um, sneaker culture isn't a fringe or a niche interest anymore. It's not on the underground. It's per it's permeated into pop culture. I remember there was a time when I used to watch TV where if someone on TV was wearing a limited edition shoe, we used to freak out 
take a picture of it and upload it into a forum. Like, oh my God, never guess who was wearing this. Now, no one does that anymore because there's fan accounts or there's uh, accounts such as a, a celebrity vice, for instance, that will post up images of people wearing clothes and shit or people wearing cool trainers and no one bats an eyelid. It's not that, it's not that incredible anymore. Everyone's wearing cool shit. Everyone's got a little 14 year old kid that goes out and gets cool stuff for LeBron James or whatever other player it is or like, um, I don't know, those name me a nick jonas person right that everyone's got a kid a connect that kind of buys them shoes not that incredible anymore it's permeating to pop culture yet these brands still want to pretend like you know limited edition shoes is the way to go and again they're only killing it for themselves sooner rather than later the bottom will fall out from it um again um, i hope so i hope stadium goods are able to kind of squeeze as much as they can out of the deal but you know 250, 250 million nowadays in this climate with the way with the way limitation shoes are going and the the, the the breakneck speed that they're kind of churning them out, I'm not sure if that's that's as good as the deal as it looks looks like on paper. But again, what do I know? I'm just a young boy from Stratford talking shit into a microphone, looking at a webcam with these fucking shitty glasses that I picked up from from bloody Asos. It is what it is. <laughs>